having a wonderful career in marketing, sales, and communications, and public relations in the corporate sector in Africa for many years. This wonderful and vibrant lady stepped into the land of Australia a few years ago. After having set a brilliant career so far, she had to find new ways of providing her services and educate about her community in Australia, a project that's very close to her heart and she launched her own brand, Emerging Brand Africa. A resilient, a charming and a vibrant lady who has gone through a lot of those hurdles which a lot of students, when a lot of students graduates who leave the country and go to the new country face in many ways in finding new job and settling and making their mark in a different country. So I am so happy to have this guest speaker who can really resonate and relate to your problems. And she is here to help you to take your first step, Catherine Jonathan. Oh, thank you, Shani. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's Kathy. I mean, that's what um, I'm popularly known as. Uh, Kathy, I think some some people could be lazy to go through all the syllables of Catherine, and I forgive them because I do love Kathy. So, <laughs> yeah, Kathy, you belong from a very very vibrant country, Africa, and you have been working there, and you had a very successful corporate journey, corporate career experience in sales, communication, marketing. Yeah. Now you're in Australia, and you are the founder of Emerging brand Africa and there's a lot more to it. I want to understand what was that one decision or what was that one phase, something that happened in your life, you know, that was really challenging and that if that had to do anything with, you know, changing your um, country or taking up this project to come to Australia and work yeah. towards it. Yeah, well, um, yeah, so a bit of a background story, Shani, is that, um, yeah, I grew up in Kenya, went to school there, did my degree in PR, uh, communication, major in PR, and eventually did my MBA, marketing, uh, uh, specializing in marketing. And for over 12 years, I did work in uh, one of the biggest corporate in Africa, in uh, digital media broadcast which is where I mostly gained all, you know, all my experience really. And it's such a long time that within that time frame, then you do identify your strongest skills. And I was lucky to have managers or bosses that gave me that opportunity to grow as a person. Um, and I grew from, you know, a salesperson uh, to managing an account, and I enjoyed the whole process. But I think I give credit to managers who see a potential in, you know, in a young employee, and they support them towards that growth and hold their hand to just realize that potential fully. So I think within that time that I did sales and marketing and 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 communication. It gave me an in, um, not just experience and independence of um, operation, so to speak, but it exposed me to uh, work within other with other departments. And what then that does as an account manager, because you're looking at you know different accounts, and mine was retail you are the liaison person so you have to know what you know your clients marketing needs are what their sales needs are what their pr needs are and so you relay that back to your uh, organization and you have to draw strategies that fit you know both and so i did learn that and i became very good at it and i enjoyed the process it didn't feel like work and and so so years went by and the relocation to Australia was brought on table. This was, you know, to join my, my family here in Australia. And so I had to leave my corporate career where I was very comfortable and in the process of growth. And so I found myself in a new country. Now, I got here and, you know, looking for work, especially that, you know, seemed same as what I was doing was a bit of a challenge. And I think those are some of the challenges that, you know, the, 
people moving from countries or even young students um, might find themselves in because suddenly you are out of your home country, you are out of your comfort zone, you may not necessarily have your family here, you don't have your mentors here. And so finding grounding of or direction um, was my biggest challenge in those past few months. I see two very, very, you know, important things in your journey so far. One is that you slowly climb the uh, corporate ladder and started enjoying it. So it also gives me an understanding that, that you can, you still have time uh, while you're working, you can realize, you know, what you're good at. You really do not need to worry about that. I need to figure out everything from the get go. And uh, that is something very beautiful in your story. And when you did realize that you started enjoying your work and you were getting better and better at it. And I think as the li life is, you know, sometimes when you're at the best, you get, a, you get hit by something that you have never thought of. And which was something in your story that you had to come back to Australia to your family. But that was also compromising on your career. So there's sometimes that you take decisions because some things are more important. I think this is kind of a dilemma that a lot of students do face and people who are students who actually go to different countries abroad to study from anywhere. Uh, you're very yeah. right on the fact that whatever experience that you had from the past yeah. country, yes. it, it somehow is just not enough yes. in the new country. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. think that's a very important point where, we, where you left, um, Kathy, in, uh, when we're just talking and from yeah. there I would like to ask you a question um, yeah. since you were facing a lot of challenges uh, so do a lot of students do face uh, yeah. what are the top three challenges that you faced uh, in that time and how much time did it really take for you to either find a job or build your own uh, venture that you have actually done what was that period like because that is very difficult so I would like to hear your story yes um so in your, just, just to take you back your conversation with, you know, finding the courage to leave home, to go and study abroad, it is, it is a courageous thing that most students do. Whether they want to do it to progress in their career, because some have that vision, they know they want to be in a, at a place and they know that getting international qualification from Australia or another country is gonna, you know, take them there. Or if, you know, parents decide you're gonna go to Australia, you will study this because I said so. And because, you know, they see the potential in you sometimes hidden, we, you know, as young people, they, you know, usually I was there, you don't normally see it. Um, and so taking that, you know, step to come and study in any foreign country is not easy, you know. And so for those students who have done that and they find themselves in a new country, I think I think they deserve honor and support because, yeah, packing your bags, go to a foreign country, you don't know no one, it takes a courageous person. And so when you find yourself in a new country and you don't know where to start, I think the first thing is to remind yourself that the first step that you've already achieved, which is being in a new environment, you put yourself out there, is in itself such a massive personal growth. You know, it's a step towards the right direction. And so then the next thing would be to identify what do I really want to do in this new country? What can I offer in my new community? And I, I like using the word community because whatever we are in the university, where you live, in your work, that is your community. And so once you find the purpose and uh, the value that you can offer to your community, then you start working, you know, like reverse engineering the whole process. And so I imagine that I'm addressing um, students who've already either in the process of, you know, their study or they've graduated and they don't know where to start. So the first thing would be, you know, I like to use my three C's. There are actually more C's. So the first C would be clarity. And clarity comes from identifying that which you feel in your heart that you can offer to someone else 
and that that is in your heart is your purpose is the value that you can offer and so when, once you decide oh i'm good at this how can i package that goodness in me to help someone else offer it as, as a value or as a service so clarity is one thing sometimes we look like i'll take you back to my um process of creating emerging brand i i really had i had good ideas of what i wanted to do but getting to you know clear of clear thoughts of how do i package this you know i went through a lot of processes and talking to people and but it was clear from the word go what i really wanted to help people with how is what i didn't know but yeah in the process of talking to people then um you get to know and so that takes me to my second c which is courage you'd have to be courageous enough to approach people for help and the thing that i've seen even with the, like the mentorship program uh, of uh, australian marketing institute it's a great platform for young for young uh, marketers or young students young professionals because there you'd find mentors that can guide you clarify what your value offering then becomes so that's you know having the courage to ask for help having the courage to step out of your comfort zone so the other c is consistency and so consistency is okay so you figured what you want to do you've got you know you've been courageous enough to ask for help and ask how you do it then do you have the guts to stick to it so consistency is key it takes time but you've got to you know put in the effort and trust in the process and trust that what you are on about is going to be profitable and valuable in the end the three c's that you have mentioned clarity courage and consistency yes. and i think it's so good that you said that one needs to find out what they're good at and what how because if you're good at something you're definitely going to do it out of passion and you're going to add value to anyone that you're offering the services to it necessarily doesn't need to mean that uh, it do- doesn't mean that you really need to you know uh, get a job out uh, right out there or you need to have a, a sort of a part time job you will eventually but i think even if you are getting it's taking a lot of time you can start with volunteering and you can be and you can share that on board or on your social media because when you're visible when you're showing what you're good at and that how you're helping other people that's when your skills and your intention is you know known to everyone and you start getting noticed so that is a yes. very good start kathy thank you so much and i believe that your journey must have been very similar you 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 you, you, you as you mentioned you had your own clarity and you found your how by talking to people and you were consistent and i think then bo, bo was born your own brand which is emerging brand africa you have said that i'm driving the change that i hope for and want my child for my children and the future generations which is providing visibility and amplifying african owned brands which is amazing because i would love to really know more about them so <laughs> where did this idea stem from and how did you go about setting up your own business here yes yeah, so um it's two and a half years now in australia coming to three and as i said came here and i you know try looking for work that you know fit what i really wanted but i it's true you to say it, you've got to get yourself out there and volunteer and i volunteered hundreds of times and i did it from a very good place because i wanted to learn the culture learn the industry and network because you have to network like get out and do stuff and know people and so It, when i you know I, i when i was doing that i got to meet people and then as new africans in australia i would look around and whenever for whatever services that i wanted even braiding making my hair because um you know it's not every african who can but looking for someone who can actually make your hair uh, you'd have to ask another african so word of mouth you know you would look, look around but then you don't find much you look in the car in the media and you don't see you know much 
African brands being featured. And we've got, you know, amazing passions. We've got um, amazing talent when it comes to sports and, and art and music and fashion. There's just a lot. So I just felt that there, there was, you know, a gap. And then my son would ask me, mom, I mean, I don't see any Africans being featured on TV. And I say, yeah, I don't too. And so I thought, look, I may not fully understand how the media industry operates here. I am yet to get full grasp of how the entire industry really operates in this new country, which I still call new country, which is now my home. And so what I wanna do is to drive that change that I want my son to be able to look and see people that look like him succeeding and really achieving their dreams. And so I thought, okay, how do I go about this? And I always, I'm very passionate about everything to do with communications and marketing, always, but more so uh, culturally, like how do I sell my culture? Because most people don't, may not fully understand Africa, which is a big continent of 55 countries. Okay. And I come from Kenya, which is, an, which is in East Africa. And so each time someone would ask me, okay, so where do you come from? So I take them as, I take the opportunity to educate. And I know it's, you know, it's because that's the only way you can share your story and your culture. And so back and forth with my, you know, ideas of how do I do this and how do I help the youth and help my son, you know, I decided, okay, so I'm going to create a platform where I can showcase the small African businesses uh, of what they are doing. And I also would like to showcase what Africans uh, in corporate Australia are doing. We have doctors, we have project managers, we have engineers. They are there, they are in this you know, society, but we never get to see them. And so my focus is to bring them out to share their story of you know, their journey of success and what Australia as a country has provided that opportunity for them to succeed and that they're succeeding. And so once the youth, young Africans hear that, that they know that they have an opportunity to succeed in the future. Your, I think your love for community and that you know, uh, passion for public relation that really comes through when you speak. There's meaning behind everything that you say and I think there's a goal that you have and you're really working towards it. One thing is very interesting that I found in your story and I would like to highlight over here for our yes. listeners is that you knew what you wanted to do. You were somehow figuring how to do it, yet you did not know the entire industry, but you still started working towards it with whatever little you knew. That yeah. is a key, you know, for anyone. If you yeah. like something, if you know that you can help, but you yeah. don't know the entire how, but at least you know a little bit of how you can start, I think that is an amazing thing. There, yeah. there is no such thing as perfection at the beginning. No. You might reach there if you're very consistent and keep working <laughs> towards it. And uh, yeah, but I think the journey starts by just starting the journey. You never yes. really know the entire thing at the very beginning. And that's yes. what Kathy's story is so inspiring. And it's so interesting that you took upon yourself and you're still finding the way. I know it's not easy. You have a lot of hurdles, business hurdles, yes. personal hurdles, a lot of things that comes in the way. And you need to keep educating yourself as well yes. along the way. Yes, yes, so, yes definitely. Yeah. So thank you, Kathy, for coming on my first step ever and sharing your journey and giving a glimpse about, you know, what Africa is all about. And that was such an interesting story to know about the braids that you were talking about, which I love. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't have very long hair that I can experiment <laughs> with. <laughs> but I have always been fascinated uh, by the braids. You know, I, I remember uh, yes. traveling in trams and I came yeah. across these two lovely um, African young girls and they had long braided hair. So this looks yes. so beautiful. I was staring yeah. to the point that it just made made them feel awkward, maybe. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you, Kathy. And I am looking forward yeah. to see what your emerging brand Africa does. Oh, mean. thank you, Shani. Thank huh? you so much for having me. And yes, neither can I wait to see where Imagine France is going to go. 
Yes. yes. And just one last question. Do you have any top three tips for the students or leaders that you would like to leave them that you have learned from your journey? Yes, consistency. Look, I think for me, it's just consistency. And it doesn't matter, you know, which stage you are uh, of your profession career or even as a student. We learn as we go and we do it every single day and we stick to, you know, the process of learning to perfect, you know, what we are on about. So if you're on a mission to help your community, you stick to the journey, trust the process, you know, and there are days that you'd feel like, no, I'm not meant to be here, but you go back to, you know, deep within you, you would know that this is for you. And if you do not do it, you are failing someone in the world who needs to hear uh, or know your service or buy your product. So I, I, I suppose um, my advice to um, your listeners really is to stick to the process, trust it and be consistent and trust that what you have to offer is so valuable and the world needs to hear about it. That was such a powerful you know, message that you have shared that if you are good at something and if you're doing something, keep doing it because if you don't you know, offer your service to the community, which yes. is so good at you're actually doing this service to someone who can gain yes. from it. Exactly. And I think that is a very good motivator to keep going on, on the days when you feel that you really want to give up. Yes. So thanks, Kathy. Um, Thank you, you Sorry, just before you leave, yes. is there any quote that you really resonate with that you would like to leave our listeners with? Yes, I love, it's It's so simple, it's so easy. And I got to learn about it that of course I have several of them, but this one is a, an inch forward, an inch forward. And I borrowed this from um, a good friend of mine, a business coach, you know, a business educator, not a coach, business educator. And she uses this and I just love it, inch forward. So it doesn't matter that little step that you take, um, then it it for it makes it moves you, it propels you forward. So an inch forward or inch forward. And with that one inch forward, I'm sure that you are inspired today to take one inch forward today for your journey. As we on my first step, will keep taking one inch forward with each inspiring story that actually gives you some actionable steps to take forward towards your journey. Thank you, Kathy. It was a pleasure having you over here and I'm so looking forward to see what your brand does. Thank you. Thanks, Shani, for having me.